Since 2020, there has been a power struggle with employees and employers. We've heard the term, the great resignation, quiet quitting, quiet firing, all the above. Now you guys know, as for me, one of the last times you see me doing a video like this, I was telling you that I quit my 175K cybersecurity job. Link to the video right there. However, now I wanna talk about what life has been like since I started my new gig. So sit back and relax and let's check out the video. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to episode 82 of the Textual Talk Podcast. Well, I'm your host, HD. For those of you who are not familiar with me, I am a cybersecurity professional. I have a decade of experience in IT with seven years being in cybersecurity. And I'm also a career coach and as you see, a content creator. Now, in today's episode, I will briefly want to talk to you guys about, I started my new gig and do I regret quitting? And what has it been like these last couple of months at this new role? So I want to give you guys a, a quick fact real quick. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, and now this is from 2021, the average quit rate was 2.7% or approximately 4 million people per month. This means that roughly 1 million people quit their jobs each week. However, this number can fluctuate depending on the particular week and other factors. Now, if you guys know me, I am for looking out for your own best interest and not any companies, because as we've been seeing since 2023, so many different layoff stories have been happening. And it's sad sometimes to get on LinkedIn and see these things with people just getting fired. And I always just hope like, hey, as long as they gave them a good severance, hopefully they'll be able to make it until they get their next role. I've been seeing people that have been laid off for like a year, a couple of months. And now there has not been a lot of cybersecurity professionals that have been laid off. There have been some. If you are, you want to transition to cybersecurity, you already know how to get at me. I can help you with that. All my links will be in the description and let's set up a consultation. But this video isn't about that. It's about you always remembering to look out for your best self-interest. Now, as you know, in my quit video, I talked about, yes, I was getting paid, very good money, especially for my age. And you know, whatever percent that makes me out of America of making money. However, I also share with you guys that I really was not happy. And also knowing that the task that I did in that role day to day would not help me in the long term, I would not be able to do the jobs that I really wanted to do. And if I actually wanted to go somewhere else in that company, that's at their discretion. And I've said plenty of times on previous podcasts that I found out they didn't backfill my role. So that possibly meant if I stayed there and tried to move around internally, they possibly could have had me by the balls. Where I'm saying, hey, you can move around once we get someone else in your chair. Which means sometimes you stay six months longer than you needed to. That six months of skill has decreased. But enough about that. Let's talk about this. So I started my new gig and let me tell you guys, it has been great. This has been one of the better companies that I've worked with in the WoW. It actually feels like my other favorite company that I started with back in 2018, five years ago. Now, my title is Threat Detection and Incident Responder. To sum it up, I work in a SOC and I also handle IR procedures. This was great for me because I've always wanted to not only triage the alerts and escalate them, but be on the other end of actually doing the technical stuff. Now, my job at Goldman Sachs was incident management, which means if an incident happened, I would manage that incident and make sure all the pertinent information was given to us from each team, each vendor, whoever we need to get information from. So this job has been great. Let's talk about some stuff. So one of the biggest things I want to talk about right now is company culture. By and far, much better than the last place. And it's not going to be me talking about the company the whole time. No, it's just pointing out discrepancies of how old employers can be like the more progressive employers. With this new company, everyone is remote in the company or you can go into a hub if you choose to. Every week we get a flex day. So at the most people work four and a half days a week. These flex days are used for, if you need to do something with family, just need some rest, you need to study, pretty much anything, but you get a flex day every week. They also do not believe in meetings past 12 o'clock on Fridays. They also don't believe in pointless meetings. We have work phones so we can separate personal from work. We use up-to-date messaging standards. Of course, people don't like Teams, but I am a, I'm not a team stan, but I do love Microsoft Teams. We use tools like that. People are active. It is great. This is, so I work in a SOC environment. One of the biggest things that people don't talk about on the internet is in a SOC, communication is imperative. The old people will try to say that because you are not in the office that there is some type of disconnection from the 
with each other. However, I found out to have more disconnection being in office versus being remote. Being remote, you can reach out to people when you need to. You can just talk about something, send a funny meme, send a link, you can watch it, whatever. It's cool. In an office, not so much. Sometimes everybody's have memes, you can't talk. When I'm at home, if, if I need to go take a nap or have to do some on lunch, I can do that. Or I can go run a quick errand. It's just so much better for your work-life balance. Also, if you're interested in course careers, please use my link that's in the description and use my coupon code. Get $50 off, especially if you want to do IT. Use Josh Matacor's course and get your IT job quickly. Or if you want to do tech sales. Tech sales, like I said, you can get six figures pretty quickly. Earlier in the podcast, I talked about you seeing all these layoff stories, all these tragic things that are happening to everyone. And you may be leery of trying to go to a different company because of the things you see. So my advice to you would be pay attention to the industry, the company that you want to work in is in. For example, I have a tech role, but I do not work in the tech industry. I have a tech job in a finance company. So I've been in finance the last couple of years and I pay attention to trends and what they're trying to do. And actually, when I was interviewing for this position, the manager was telling me one of the things that they were going to shift to in the middle of this year, which was going to make business even better for them. And if business is better for them, that means it's better for us. We get bonuses, we get more headcount. So that's what I would do. I would say, stop trying to chase all of the just so-called big companies because they are the most likely to see you as a number and let you go. One of the things that attracted me to this company was how many people on this team had been here for so long and not just in the same position. These people came from other positions and these were positions that were not as technical, which lets me know that, hey, they will let you try something that you're interested in this company because they like their people and they believe in you. I've reached out to uh, other people that I've met on teams. They told me the same thing. Oh, they used to do this and now they're doing that. So that is huge because a lot of times I work with clients that says, yeah, I've been doing this for five years and I can't get anywhere. And I always ask, hey, have you tried to move around internally? And a lot of times they say no. So definitely that is a big one. Now, if you're asking yourself, you told us you quit so many jobs, what's going to be different about this one? I like that I'm back to being technical, that my experience and expertise in other areas and environments similar or larger than this are actually heard. So I've already came in, I've made a note of things that I want to address and see how we're addressing them and how can we help out with it. I get to Go back to working with SOAR. I'm back to working with Splunk on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm using other tool sets as far as I'm learning more about DLP, I'm doing more with phishing. I'm actually learning more about different tools with like Palo Alto's tool set, with like things like Panorama, using tools like CoFence, using more tools like Zscaler, Prisma. So I'm getting a benefit out of this as well. I'm getting to touch tools that I wouldn't get to touch on my own. And that's another reason why I love sock work. Working in the SOC, you could potentially find what areas of security you actually want to niche in, a platform or a tool where you can be an engineer specifically for that. And you can do that versus having to do so many different things working in the SOC. So that is great. One of the other things I like about this company is they believe in training. So they believe in like doing SANS training for people. And hey, you heard it here first. You will see your boy back at SplunkConf this summer in July. That's right. I just got here and I sent the proposal to them to go to Spunk Comp and why be beneficial for me and they approved it. These are the things, right? In order to keep people at a company, they have to feel like they're getting something out of it. A lot of companies have this mindset of, oh, you should just be happy to be working for us. Not realizing, no, you should be happy that I chose to work for you. Because let's be honest, when you are a person that's an experience like myself, there are so many different companies you can work for. I had some of those roles that came on hold, director reached back out to me. Of course, I had already accepted something else, but hey, the role's about to open up. This thing is always like dating, man. I struck out a lot when I was younger on, on dating and jobs, so I always correlate them, and I'ma just keep on saying it over and over again. So if you don't wanna hear this part, skip it. When you have options, people tend to act better. When the person you're with just feels like and you're just happy to be with them, they treat you any type of way. It's similar to, hey, you know, treat your job like a fan. So they'll treat you like a superstar or whatever future said or whoever said it. They just said that and put it on a future picture. But y'all get the memo, right? These are the things that you have to take in consideration in order to always make sure you're staying ahead of the game. That's not the last rule of the rule book in drumline, but stay ahead of the game.
If not, you'll see these red flags not be paying attention and you'll have to sit down with HR and they'll say, well, you know, restructuring and blah, blah, blah. Hey, we're going to leave. So I just want you to pay attention to that. Now, as for me at the new job, what I always try to do is I come in, try to stand out. I have my, you know, important meetings. I make sure to write down things I've done big and small. I'm talking about, listen, anything big or small, please write it down. One helps for your resume. Two, you know, you have reviews when it comes to talking to your manager at the end of the year or the middle of the year, you say, okay, I've worked on these sorts of things, you know, put them in gear or whatever you got to do, put them in one note. Now, also for me, reason why I like this role is right away, I think week two, week two or yeah, I think by middle of week two, I'm working on alerts. I'm actively helping in investigations. I'm looped in. Just recently, I got to fill out like my first center, my first comms were incident. So already I'm feeling useful that's always been my issue with the last two roles I had. I did not feel useful. And a, a man of my talent, a man that is like me, that does not like things easy. I do not like to just sit there and get money. Not easy money. That's not me. If I didn't have to do anything to just get that money, I can't get more than that because I don't have that level of knowledge. So that's why I love learning. I love being useful. I just love what I do, man. And that's why the thing is, my girls even said like, you seem much happier. And it is. Like, I, I work. A, I don't even work a typical shift, guys. I work uh, 2 to, to 12 or whatnot, whatever. So with that being said, when you like what you do, everybody in your house and who you come in contact with, when you talk to, they can feel it. And that's why I said in one, that last video about quitting is that I remember talking to adults when they would be frustrated or mad all the time. You could tell they just didn't like what they were doing. And we have the power to change that. Just put your head down, learn the skills you need to learn, network, get the position you want to get. We This life is so short that you do not want to be miserable doing something you do not want to do. I don't regret quitting that job at all. Listen, if I tell the Patreon people, <laughs> if you want to know, like your boy has really been doing his thing early this year. And it's only month four. And shout out to me also, I'm 31. Now, my birthday was last week. A lot of things I wrote down, the goals I have for myself, professional life, and for this channel are starting to come to fruition. And know why they came to fruition? Because I made sure to put in the work. When you put in the work, good things happen. That's what I'm trying to tell you, people. Please put the work in. Now, what I'll tell you this is, guys, that I do plan to give you guys some more content along a lot of things. I will have another day in a life video coming pretty soon. I will do the day in a life video maybe mid-summer mid -summer again. By that time, our whole shift will be set and I'll actually be busier at work and I can really do some things I want to show you guys since I did my last day in the life video. And this is just to give you guys a realistic expectation of what you can do in certain roles. Let you guys know time I log on, I'm not just shooting my bang bang. I have maybe some projects to work on or hey, we find out something has happened and that's when I start working on the incident and I give it to who it needs to be handled to for the commander and then I work on whatever technical part that I need to work on when I follow up on these things but I really hope that you enjoyed this video guys um, if you also like the previous content that we've been putting out every Monday thank you for supporting us always make sure you go ahead and leave a comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, you name it please do that also share this video out hit the thumbs up button and if it's something that I did not address in this video, let me know in the comments below. Also, check out the Patreon. I'm going to be giving a lot of more free game in the Patreon, so you want to join the Patreon. And like I said earlier in the beginning, if you do need help getting into cybersecurity, do not hesitate to book a consultation call with me because I'm here to help you. And like I always say, let's stay textual. It's your boy HD. 